What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to the Crazy Cycling Channel. So I'm exactly where I was when I filmed my most popular YouTube video ever. And that video is called something like, check out this crazy Dutch road infrastructure. And it's about something that at the time I think I called a sunken highway. I filmed that video almost exactly a year ago, maybe just over a year ago. And as of today, that video has about 290,000 views, by far my most popular video ever. And in case you did miss it, uh, we can take another look real quick now uh, at what that video was about. And then I want to show you something else, which I was not able to film then. So I've come back. I'm back in the Netherlands, back at the same location. And I think today I can show you something else that I alluded to in that other video. Okay, so here we are. <laughs> Someone's waving at me, just like they did. <laughs> I was just filming a video about a ferry and people on a boat were waving at me, but here's someone's honking and waving at me from the highway. So, um, this is uh, what I call a sunken highway. There's probably a technical name for this. And um, you guys in the comments of that video I did last year told me exactly what this road was. I can't remember, but I know that Rotterdam is basically over that way. And The Hague is somewhere over that way and I'm pretty sure this road connects the two. We are close to Delft, the Netherlands here. And in the video I did last year, I alluded to something else, which you probably can't really see on the GoPro, but it's the next bridge over. You can probably see the concrete over there. And what that is, is that is an eco bridge. It's basically an animal crossing across this busy road, which is so, so cool. It's actually called the Aqueduct, Eco Aqueduct Zweet and Slingsloot, which is kind of a funny name. <laughs> but there's a little path that goes over there, and I want to head down there now and let's check it out. Okay, here we are at sort of an access bridge to this viaduct. So I'm just going to take you with me. You can see there's kind of a boardwalk type situation here. So let's just walk on that and see how the sun looks best with the filming. I guess if it's in my face, it's cl more clear than if I show you where I'm going. Uh, but yeah, just a boardwalk here across some water. This whole landscape, of course, is all polders, which is basically reclaimed land. So it's a really interesting landscape. You have these little fields with ditches in between and bigger ditches and canals. And I mean, historically, this would have been some kind of a marshy or just the sea or... Yeah, it's, it's a kind of an interesting landscape very artificial in a way but also managed in a really good way like with these eco viaducts so here we have to kind of bushwhack through some reeds side fact here uh, this is a really interesting thing about european reeds i don't think this plant grows in the u.s but this is a reed and every reed every leaf of a reed let's see it can turn around maybe so that the sun is better has a little imperfection in it like here you can see there's this little divot and every leaf will have that there's the there's a divot in that one and that's one well you can actually just tell reed by looking at it but um yeah that's kind of a side fact about reed plants here's another little imperfection in that plant but this is really cool we're kind of in the jungle here uh, so let's keep going really kind of bushwhacking here um and see where we end up. It's actually a pretty peaceful place. I guess I should talk a little quieter. I hear some birds, there's some insects around, and the funny thing is that we are extremely close to that major highway I was talking about, but maybe you could hear that motorcycle, but you can actually pretty much almost not hear anything. So here we are, kind of getting onto the viaduct. So if I show you that way, you can probably see the cars coming over there and they're going down and here's kind of the barrier of this eco bridge and there's all this water that goes all around and then if I spin this way you can see that there's our boardwalk obviously here's some water and here are some reeds and the highway continues past the reeds but it's actually a pretty wide bridge and you, I can't even see the other side of it. So it's, it's really, really cool. There are some buoys here. I think 
that might be for navigation, but I don't know. That's just a guess. I'm guessing this links up to some other canals and maybe if you're on a canoe or something, you can come uh, canoe paddle across this eco viaduct. But yeah, carrying on this boardwalk a little bit. And now there is a little bit, a little bit of traffic noise. Once again, that way we have this major road, which I forgot what it was. I thought it was the A4 or something, but when it, I think you guys commented that it was a spur or Tell me again in the comments, or maybe I'll look at my old video. A fish just jumped out of the water over there, or maybe it was, maybe it was a, a, a coot or a, or a duck or something. And uh, yeah, amongst this very built up part of the world, because this whole area of the Netherlands is called the Randstad, it's like Rotterdam, The Hague, Amsterdam all together. It's pretty built up, but considering how built up this landscape is and how managed it is and in a way how artificial it is the dutch really put a lot of effort into you know having these little areas of nature and doing something for nature as well because i guess this is a good point to talk about why something like this is important and why you know places like the u.s and other countries can learn from what they've done here and created this what they call an aqua an eco aqueduct or i guess i would call it maybe an eco bridge or an animal bridge, but this obviously carries water and, and more than just animals. But when you build a road, that road actually affects the landscape further out away from the road. It's actually up to about a mile or a kilometer away from the side of the road. Why is that? A lot of reasons. There's the noise, obviously, but there's also the fumes. There are particulate pollutants from tires, vicinity, like tires wearing away. That does, doesn't just uh, wear away into nothing that actually just breaks down into like microplastics and that'll pollute the environment. And also the highway itself will affect like the topography of the area or the, the, the landscape itself. And it might block certain things like the flow of water or wind. And it'll affect things like the trees. I mean, there's a big fish jumping out over there. It'll affect things like the trees and uh, all those things get affected by a road. Also, obviously, roads will affect animals because roads are very dangerous for animals. Obviously, you know, in North America, we know that from deer, there are so many millions of deer and it's really easy to hit deer, but at night you'll run into all kinds of animals. And the same thing here, because they don't necessarily have a good place to cross. And on a grander scale, what roads do is they fragment habitats. And that's something that humans do a lot is they'll basically fragment habitats. And in, out of one big landscape, it'll get carved up into smaller areas by development and specifically by things like roads. And that causes a lot of changes because some animals migrate, some animals need a bigger territory. Um, there are just certain needs that those animals have that just get disrupted by human activities like building roads. Maybe I'm preaching to the choir here. Also, some animals benefit. In the US, a classic example would be something like a, a, a cowbird because cowbirds live in those edge habitats. So when you have something like a power line right of way or a road, the cowbirds will live in that edge habitat and they'll benefit at the detriment of other species. And same thing kind of happens here in the Netherlands, obviously. And when you have a patchwork habitat and animals can't really move between those habitats, one way of kind of mitigating that would be through something like this eco corridor or this eco aqueduct. So that's really why they're doing it. It's to kind of build bridges between those fragmented habitats just to help out those species that would struggle otherwise. So it's a really cool thing. And it's something that is very deliberate because it obviously costs a lot of money to build something like this. And in a, from a pure capitalistic point of view, there's not much value in this. You know, you're not transporting a road across the other road. You're not, you know, there's no infrastructure there. You can't move people or goods across this. It's purely to benefit the environment. But there are a lot of subtle benefits to something like this, which is what this explicitly recognizes. And that is the value of the environment, which is just intrinsically valuable. And it does actually bring value to people because anything we do to benefit the environment will have effects on, for example, people's health. This is a nice calm place to come. It will have effects on this perhaps on a smaller scale, but in general, things like climate change and all those things just have benefits for humanity as well. 
And also it's just the right thing to do because we do disturb a lot of wildlife and it's just a good thing to do to try and mitigate to a certain, that to a certain extent. There will always be an impact. This road clearly has an impact, but the fact that the road is sunken and the fact that it has these eco bridges means that the impact is a lot less than it might be. So there's, <laughs> there's my rant over. I'm gonna go explore what's down here because why not? So let's just, maybe I'll take you with me. Let's turn the camera around and see what we find here. So through the reeds again, there's another bridge because again the Netherlands is just a very watery place and then it actually ends here and here we can see this other canal that way I can see some coots over there and some other kind of ducks swimming and behind me it's actually quite peaceful I can hear birds singing and at this point I just get just a little bit of a just a little bit of background noise from that highway but this is about the level that in the US or actually anywhere on a highway without some kind of noise protection I would hear this much noise maybe a mile from that road and here I am I mean what's that 50 feet like 20 meters maybe it's right there there's the um the side of the, the of the highway and it's just kind of a light background noise and I can still hear dogs barking I can hear birds it's it's really nice nicer would be if this road wasn't here <laughs> but we do have to move people around and this is actually pretty nice. So, um, yeah, I guess that was kind of the video, but there is something else I do want to show you once we get out of here. I guess now I can turn the camera around with the light behind me and just show you what this trail looks like in all its glory. I still can't quite figure out these buoys or boys or whatever because they are on that side of the boardwalk as well. This looks like something that would be for little uh, canoes, but I'm not really too sure. Although maybe, you know, maybe a, a, a canoe or something would come from there and head this way. Oh, you know what? Actually, this delineates. There is something in the water. There are some kind of cages down there and some plants in there. Um, what's that for? I have no idea. It could be a structural thing. It could be actually something to benefit wildlife. I'm not really quite sure. Let's spin you around again and show you that road. And uh, this place, it is a very, very interesting landscape. I feel very conflicted about the Netherlands. I love the Netherlands, but it is interesting to think about the history of the place and how a lot of this country was reclaimed from the North Sea, basically. It's like anything, there's give and take. And we do have to think about, you know, hum humanity does have its needs. But I think it's really important to understand the impact of the things we do. And that's why I wanted to come to this place and show it to you. So I'm going to get out of here and then I do want to show you just one last thing and then we'll summarize the video for you. Okay, so one last thing I want to show you is actually right here. And it is an elevated bench. And this is kind of funny because this viaduct is actually on Google Maps. If you look kind of near Delft, down the, I think it's the A4, there's a little village there called De Couple, and if you kind of look in that area, you might find the Eco Aqueduct Zweet and Sloot Slyke. Can't remember what it was. <laughs> and it's on Google Maps, it has reviews. <laughs> and the picture is a picture of this bench. And I thought I would come up here too and uh, show you the view. I know that it's silhouetting me right now, but I can show you the other direction. And now that we're elevated, we can just see how flat this landscape is. It's kind of a wild, as in crazy, interesting place. There's a lot of some kind of construction. This looks like a pipeline to me. So I'm wondering if they're going to put in some kind of pipeline infrastructure, but basically just flat with polders. So here, these are all polders behind the pipes. You can see the, the rows of reeds and that's where the drainage ditches are. And that just drains the water into these canals. And the whole thing was is surrounded by dikes and uh, at one point it was pumped out with pumps probably wind powered pumps and these older polders so just an interesting interesting landscape and a cool place to come it's weirdly peaceful but not in a way it gives me a very strange feeling and i can try and show you what the viaduct looks like from up here but it will be kind of silhouetted 
but there's the there's my bike over there the entrance is over there the actual bridge is here and you can kind of see the walls of the tunnel of the road all over there so that's the video for the day i hope you enjoy that one it's uh, just something that kind of fascinates me so thanks as always for watching take care and have an amazing rest of your day thanks for watching